there are two kinds of decisions, uh, but I'm going to focus uh, to help uh, with that answer on what a local authority refers to as an executive decision. That's a decision uh, taken uh, by, obviously, the executive, usually by uh, the cabinet or a cabinet member, uh, about how a particular service is uh, delivered or a change that's made to a, d a service or uh, how much money is spent on a particular uh, kind of function. And those decisions are usually taken by uh, a cabinet member, as I said. But the way in which a cabinet member uh, is required to take that decision needs to comply with a number of rules and some of those rules are external and some of them are internal. The usual process ends up being that an officer will bring together a number of options and will discuss those with the cabinet member in what's referred to as a briefing or, a, or, or a, an informal discussion and will get some guidance on what the decision may need to look like or involve. The officer will also take some advice from a number of sources internally uh, because the decision will have to comply with the council's budget and so some financial officers will need to uh, be involved in it. It may have some legal implications for the council's functions and so the officer may take advice from, from legal services. If it's going to affect something the way in which uh, staff carry out that function there may also be advice to be taken from another part of the council as well. Once all of that advice has been pulled together, it's put into a report, a, a, a document that explains what the decision is, what advice has been obtained, uh, what options have been considered, who has been consulted about it, and what factors have been taken into account. Now, the reason it's put into that form is because when a local authority takes a decision, it's got to have a record, it's got to be, be auditable as to why a particular decision was taken uh, and how it rationalises that decision. So that's why you end up with a written record of a decision. Uh, and that document uh, eventually is presented to uh, the uh, cabinet member for them to endorse. And that process is also published. And so again, when a, a decision is taken by a local authority, uh, it's published uh, on its website uh, so that uh, all of the uh, residents or those people that are interested in a particular decision can see uh, what decision is being taken. When the whole council meets, it can uh, obviously decide a, a number of things uh, because every member can invite the full council to debate a particular subject uh, or of course a council can receive a petition that it will then debate. But in terms of a decision that is required to be taken by full council, there is probably only one and that's the setting of the budget. So every year the full council in for West Sussex that involves all 71 members of the council get to decide how much money is raised in the council tax and therefore what the council tax uh, level is set by the council and gets to decide how much money is spent on particular functions. So the, the full council gets to decide the budget every year. All of the other decisions tend to be taken by the executive, by the cabinet and leader. I have explained earlier that most of the decisions that are taken by a council are what's called executive decisions. Yes. But in fact there are a number of things that the law sets down as non-executive decisions. That's to say there are some decisions that uh, the cabinet or the leader aren't allowed to take by law. And probably the most uh, common one is planning. So when a local authority takes a decision on a local planning development, it can only take that through a committee, through a planning committee. It can't be taken, can't be within the gift of, a, of one single member. Uh, district councils have a similar rule relating to licensing. Uh, when they uh, set licensing decisions uh, for their local community, that can only be taken by a committee. The other um, main area of responsibility for uh, committees is what's called scrutiny. Because when the model of local government that involves a cabinet and an executive was established, the law required that all councils have a set of scrutiny committees uh, whereby members sit in a committee to preview or to uh, check on the decisions that the executive are taking and they can hold the executive to account by asking the cabinet member to come before them and answer questions or to explain 
uh, their particular plans or policies in a particular area. And so most of the so-called backbenchers in a, in a local council will sit on select or scrutiny committees in order to examine what the executive are doing.